Okay, so... I signed on a little early tonight. One whole minute early. Let's see, what are we going to work on tonight? Um, we're going to work on two things, I think. I think we're going to work on this. I'm going to put in the sky up here and maybe some of the ground. And we might add some more detail to this fine painting here. Which is definitely coming along. Just adding those little bits of dark. That contrast makes all the difference in the world. And then maybe I don't know, maybe work on this sign up here. That's going to be tough. Because the HSB and really bit of niche dynasty and Gleis 31, that should really all be in yellow. And then the background should be black. I haven't quite figured out how to do that yet. This is a sign. This is an electronic sign board. It's a little different. I don't know. We'll think about that. That's different possibilities. But that's the plan. We'll work on that stuff. And so I think where we're going to start is to turn this around backwards. Because it makes it much easier to paint. And we're going to put in some sky color here. that I really like this particular cerulean blue because we have a lot of details I'm gonna work in this direction yeah there's some kind of news somewhere and what I'm doing here is kind of problematic I painted the foreground first, and now I'm adding the background. That's really not probably the right way, way to do this. Although if you're delicate enough, it doesn't really matter. Hairbrush. Hair. Hair has attacked my painting. It's not actually hair. It's actually one of the bristles from this brush. So yeah, actually, if your technique is good, it's not real important what you do first. Although most people would tell you you do the background to foreground. Well, no. There's 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 schools of thought in that. A lot of people say you go front to back, others say you go back to front. They definitely say you go from big to little. And with most things that's what I do. But it also depends a lot on what I'm doing. Like here, like if you remember watching this from the beginning. I started this with with the boards, with the outline. So, yeah, it depends on what you're doing. See, now there you need a little blending. Okay. This still needs a little blending. That's really a good thing to practice, is um, how to blend your colors. Regardless of what medium you're working in, it doesn't really matter.
how to get a smooth wash something that's worth practicing and that's true no matter what you're doing it's a lot easier with say something like um felt tip markers which i do occasionally there's more consistency with that but you still need a little practice practice to do it Last time I was here, somebody was asking me about um, painting up to the edges of other colors. If you'll notice, the paper is now thoroughly dry with the pigment on it. So if I scrub at it, this would come off and it would blend with the blue. But if I just run up to it and touch it, it doesn't do a whole lot. And also, once again, the pencil lines actually provide a little bit of a paint barrier. That graphite provides a small paint barrier from one side to another. It really isn't a lot of different. This is just like filling in a coloring book after you get to a certain point. Really all painting is like that. You do the you do the drawing and the underpainting in black and white or brown and white or brown and white and blue and in oils and then you do do the, the main colors and it's just filling in. See, I could have probably gotten away with, with doing this wash in blue if I hadn't done the wood first. I could just have painted like right over that wood and then put the wood over it. And if it was light enough, you wouldn't notice the blue. You can probably get away with that. The big thing is, As you can see, if you're paying attention, this has dried so fast that now I have to add some color and blend it down. This, like I said, this is the part that you actually need to practice a bit. Oh, let's see. I'm going to read some German news here. Our numbers have actually fallen in Bavaria in the last 14 days. It's fallen from about 625 cases in 7 days per 100,000 to about... 375 or 380 or something. So actually, our numbers are looking fairly decent for the time being. We haven't been flooded with Omicron yet. And I'm sure that's coming. There is no doubt about it. And I think that actually it's highly likely and when Omicron does really start spreading here, like it is in the United Kingdom and some other places, we'll probably end up back in another extreme lockdown. Although it depends. If Omicron is not as virulent, it might be that we avoid that. I don't know. We'll see. 
It really depends. The, the key metric is, is the number of people who are in intensive care stations. That, that's really going to determine everything. If, if, if our intensive care stations are overloaded, they'll, they'll lock the country down. If they're not, then we're probably safe. That would probably be my guess. So yeah, it's really, it's right now it's hard to say where it's going. Temporarily it looks good, but whether or not it's going to be that good long term, I really don't know. So where was that thing? Here, let me read this to you. What's up with this? Anti akulier das passiert, wenn man in der Bahn seinen Impfnachweis nicht zeigen kann. Das Smartphone hat sie alle Impftest und Genießung Nachweise. Doch was ist passiert in der Bahn, wenn das Handy keinen Sanft mehr hat? Darf ich weiterfahren? Regensburg. Diese Frage hat sich bestimmt jeder schon einmal gestellt. Was passiert, wenn die Handybatterie leer ist und man genau dann den Impfnachweis zeigen soll? Da die meisten Menschen ihn wohl in einer Art anstatt in physischer Form mit sein, sich herumtragen, ist die, der, der, ist die Frage durchaus berichtigt. Die Mittelbayerische ist ihr nachgegangen. So the smartphone has everything. The test and recovery evidence. However, what is past here? What's going to happen in the train when your handy or the handy no more juice has? Am I allowed to continue riding the train? Regensburg. These questions have themselves definitely for each at least once place. What is passiert? What happens when the handy battery is empty and one cannot, and then one must show his um, vaccination paperwork to the train porter or to somebody? There, the most men, most people, most humans, <clears throat> well, and I know. Because they keep everything in physical form, they don't keep everything in an app instead of carrying around in physical form. It's the question that we have to reckon with. <coughs> this paper has looked into the matter. And then they go through it here and they talk about it. And basically, if you're riding the train today, you have to have proof that you are either vaccinated, tested within the last 24 hours, or healed within the last six months. If not, you can receive a fine of up to 5,000 euros, which is a lot of money. That's like two months take home salary for me. Um, if your battery's dead, it's up to the official who, can, who checks your paperwork. Um, here we're talking about not railroad personnel, but either police we also have something here called the Ordnance Opt, which is sort of a, it's the department literally of everything is in order if you are following the rules and doing the things that you're supposed to do. Um, there's a lot of rules on that. You know, is your yard properly groomed? Are you registered in your, where you live? Because in Germany you have to be registered. It's not like English speaking countries where you just move in and have a good time. You, you have to have a registration certificate that says I officially live here in this town, in this apartment or this house or whatever. And all of Europe is like that. It doesn't matter if you're in France. It doesn't matter if you're here, Switzerland. You got, you got to prove where you're registered. 
got to prove where you live. Um, we don't do censuses here the same way that they do in America and probably in England. There's no such thing as a census because they know where everybody is all the time. If you commit a murder and somebody knows you committed the murder, they can find you in a couple of hours because they know where your apartment is. Same thing with anything else. You, you just, you can't avoid it, man. It, it, it's not like the world that, that, that you guys live in over there. It's different. So anyways, the basic rule is that you have to carry around this paperwork. That's highly important. And if you don't, you can get up to a 5,000 euro fine. I don't know if they'll give you that the first time, but they'll definitely make it at least a thousand euros. You're, you're going to pay some money, man. The Germans are serious about this. They're, this is not an English speaking society where you can just do what you want and well, screw everything. It doesn't work like that here. So yeah, that's, that's how, that's how it rolls here. And just how it is. All right. And I think we've got that sky. Let's turn it over and take a look at it. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Now I'll go back and do a little touch up. This is where I think it needs to be smoothed out a little bit. Yeah, I need all those, I need all of these little fence thingies. The slats, yeah. Yeah, I actually got stopped last night coming home, and my certificate was not correct. They gave my date of permanent residency as my birth date, which means I'm seven years old. Seven or eight, eight years old. Eight. And um, that was not cool. I could have been in a lot of trouble for that, but she checked some of my other paperwork. It was okay. And then I went and got my paperwork fixed and reloaded my digital certificates into my phone because I'm not really interested in having trouble. This is not the thing I'm going to fight about. Not in Germany. Yeah, I like that. That That's looking pretty good. This is, this is looking pretty good. I like that. That looks good. Um, where did I put my drink? I had a nice drink. A nice adult beverage. Where did I have? After a long, hard day at work, this is exactly what I need. Yeah, I like that. That that looks good. We'll let that dry out a little bit. Some of this, this is some, this, this cerulean blue is kind of a weird paint. I think it's, um, it's something made with a chemical, so it's staining. Because it's hard to get these gradations really good. This is probably a place where it would be better. It would probably be better to use a cerulean blue that was pigment based. Mm. 
this would probably be a case where the best thing to do is to let this dry out a little bit and then try to mess with it. I'm not looking for perfection here. This is supposed to be kind of rough and fun and, you know, that's how it is. Now we need some dirt somewhere. Let's see, what is the other news? There's some other news today. I'll still go back in here and fill in some bricks later on. That's that's not finished yet. You're not seeing that. That's then I'm going to do some grass over this after it dries. It's Tuesday night, so I'm not going to do anything really detailed. I come home after a long day of programming, and it's probably better to just work on the big sections. Go for a little more color in this one. See how it looks. I like leaving a little white in these things. Yeah, we're gonna stop right there. We're gonna let that one dry. And I think we're gonna pull out this one and do a little bit of work. Let's see, what, what other news do we have here? Sodner verkundet neue Corona Regel für Geboosterte und eine überraschende Silvester Lockerung. Soder is our minister president. It means he's the guy that runs this country, Bavaria or this state of Germany, depending on your perspective. If you're German, it's a free state of Germany. If you're Bavarian, it's its own country. Legally, that's a little bit of a gray area because Germany never actually, what is it? Bavaria never actually joined the German Federal Republic. They simply said in 1949 or 1950 or whenever this was put together, that if the other 16 states joined the Republic, that they would obey all the rules and participate, but they would still be the free state of Bavaria. So basically, according to Bavarians, we live in our own country. And according to the Germans, we're a bunch of idiots, also known as the Barzi. So, Marcus Sodner verkundete eine Corona Entscheidung vor Geboosterte mit Einschränkung. Der CSU Chef überreste mit einer Sylvester Lockerung alle News im Ticker. Marcus Soder announced a Corona decision for boosted and for boosted people with a slight relaxation of things. Well, it was both relaxation and, and some some new things. The CFU chief surprised with a surprised everybody with a New Year's Eve reduction in the system or, or, or loosening. So let's see what's the news here. Update from the 14th of December. No, that's from Munich. Corona chaos in Munich for children. Okay. Those people who are boosted, they have their third booster, like me, in, are allowed in Bavaria 
in many uh, areas in the future for um, the freedom from having a test in addition to the booster. Um, as of right now, there was a 2G plus rule which said that you had to you had to be both either cured or you had to have a valid certificate and you had to have a test to go to a museum and some other things that has been removed um, in the area in whom 2G plus skill 2G is this either um, that you're 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 geimpfed or you're um, geimpfed means vaccinated or you're um, genesin which means you're healed or recovered from it and gegen corona geimpft or genesin und zusatlich getested so 2g plus means that you've got to have either have the vaccinations or you've got to be tested or you got to be cured with an official doctor's certificate and you've got to have a corona test to go do something this thing is being removed they decided that this didn't do any good. It's not going to help anybody. They're not going to get any better. That was basically for museums, as I recall, and um, fitness centers and a couple other places. So that's that's all done. Now you just have to be be vaccinated and current. Let's see. Children from under 12 don't have to worry about it. 12 to 17. There's still um, exceptions for 12 to 17 year olds. They can go to restaurants, they can stay overnight in hotels and uh, vacation homes without any certificates. Um, if you go to zoos or sport places, you don't have to have this 2G plus, but if you're in a museum, you, st oh, you still do need it. <clears throat> Um, restaurants will be open until midnight or a little later on New Year's. Um, there's 30 million euros for performers. Basically, they're going to use that money to pay people who work in the entertainment industry so that they don't die from not having any money. That's the plan. So that was, that was the news today from Germany regarding the coronavirus. Like I said, our numbers are actually pretty good. <clears throat> I don't know how long it's going to stay that way, but it's good. Not sure what's working. I kind of feel like maybe I should put this aside. Instinct tells me now it's a good time to quit. I see something here I want to correct. I want to add blue in there.
that for I'm gonna have to touch that up with some yellow. Yellows, most yellows are opaque. Oh, don't put the helo singing blue in there. That's not a good idea. Can't recommend drinking your paints. Van Gogh did that and it didn't do him real good. And that was one of the reasons why he went nuts. It's all the heavy metals in the paint. Soder Kretschmer Press Conference. Saxony MP warns. The pandemic forgives no mistake. Kretschmer is the, the minister president of Saxony. Well, yeah, anyway, so I got my boost certificate fixed, so I'm probably okay. Ex-bishop from Regensburg spreads conspiracy myths about Corona. So, Soder has reacted. Probably told him he's an idiot. Oh, this is kind of sad. Shortly before its 100th birthday, the traditional butcher closes forever. The slow death of a handwork place. Metzgerai Geiger. I have no idea where that is. A small town. And that's kind of sad. Corona in Bavaria. Live data and counts from all the cities and counties or shires. They're, they're called land circles here. So I'm, I guess in, in American English, it's, it, it's a county and probably in British English. Or you could call it a shire. So anyways, and we can just take a look at the map. Look, that's Bavaria. The darker the red, the worse things are. The bright red is between 200 and 500. The darker red is between 500 and 1,000. Orange is between 100 and 200, and that's where we're at. And let's see where I live. Oh, that's the wrong place. Here, Augsburg, 325. And 11 of our 12 intensive care beds are filled in Augsburg. 135 out of 147 beds are filled, but the rate is only 277. It's dropping hard and fast. So that's good. That's this is what I'm reading from. Um, a bomb was discovered in Nuremberg. 300 residents must leave their houses and they make a protection wall out of containers. Okay, so that was today. They had to leave their homes to get the bomb out. It's not really news. It happens here all the time. Let's see if there's anything really interesting here. Oh, no. No. The footballer Joshua Kimmich fault not sign of corona infection, vague and lungen problem, knock long a house. This guy Joshua Kimmich isn't working, he's really sick. And they're talking about long of term effects. There are still free appointments open for a special um, vaccination. They really want everybody vaccinated here. That's really important. That's Twitch. That's a Japanese printmaking channel. This guy's cool. You guys should watch him. He's great. That's David Bull. He's, he's a cool dude. I enjoy watching him. He has a great show. Um, let's see what else is going on here. We can go over and look at The Guardian and see what they're saying today. Attack was a coordinated act of terrorism. Yeah, okay, great. Pfizer says its pill is, a pr is effective in protecting against severe disease. That's cool. Kentucky Candle Factory. Bosses threatened to fire those who fled tornadoes, say workers. That's completely pathetic. 
the network of election lawyers, voters, the network of election lawyers who are making it harder to vote. Great, so much for democracy. That's finished. California ex sheriff deputy charged with pouring scalding water on mentally ill inmate. Man suffered first and second degree burns, but did not receive medical care for more than six hours. Lovely. Worst choice ever, time naming Elon Musk person here draws criticism. Disgruntled prosecutors say sailor charged with torching warship was a Navy SEAL dropout. It figures. Idiot. What an ass. Billy Eilish, I would have died from COVID-19 if I hadn't been vaccinated. I'm glad you're vaccinated. Good for you. You hate your job. What's next? The two writers exploring toxic productivity. Semi-lucid dream trick. How to unlock your creative genius without even really trying. 27 service members discharged for refusing COVID vaccine. This one I don't get. When I was in the military, you either got vaxxed or they court-martialed you. They didn't just throw you out. They just said, you're going to jail. You're going to get a Leavenworth and break big rocks and little rocks. Weird. So, yeah, the news is what it is. It's the same as always. Nothing really exciting. Let's take a look at this picture for a minute. I'll tell you what. Actually, there is something we can do here. I think here can a little bit of brown. I'm looking for easy things to do tonight. I don't do a lot of hardcore detail. It's Tuesday. I got to work tomorrow. There's a lot of pressure to get this project done. I just want to relax. I don't want to deal with insanity. Crazy people blowing up warships because they didn't get into the Navy SEALs. It's really not my thing. I mean, come on, man. That, that's pathetic. I didn't get into the Navy SEALs. And so now I'm going to blow up an American warship. That's, that's crazy. That's just... That person has a problem. It's a good thing he didn't get into the SEALs. He doesn't belong there. That is not the kind of person that they are looking for. Really. I mean, that's just... I can't believe it. <clears throat> I can believe that the bosses didn't want people to leave the factory. That's typically American. Oh, you're going to stay here and work right through the tornado. It's crazy. People should be in jail. That really is. That's just not. I'm not surprised, though. That doesn't surprise me at all. But blowing up a warship or burning up a warship or, or, or setting a fire on it because you're unhappy because you didn't get into the Navy SEALs, that's, that's just weird. That really is. That's That's just really weird. The fact that somebody would do that is just bizarre.
This is why you should stay at home and paint. It's safer, and there aren't as many idiots here. The brown in the in the video is stronger than it is actually in real life. I think that camera works better once this dries down a little bit. There's something about the water. Camera captures that and then it just looks weird. So yeah, I'll paint for a little while longer. I'm definitely going to sign off by, by 7.30 German time because i got to get ready for work tomorrow and eat some dinner. Yeah, I just don't know, man. There is a lot of weird stuff happening. Some of this is due to people freaking out from the pandemic. Some of this is just due to the fact that people are freaks. Some people. See, one of the reasons why it works like this, this, this already looks much better to me. That that rail, the, the, the ground on that railroad yard looks a lot more realistic. I'm not sure that camera's really capturing it because of the gloss of the water. But I'll let it dry. And you guys can look at it. But it's like sometimes I just look at it and go, oh yeah, I know exactly what this needs. Boom, it needs a little bit of brown. It needs this. It needs that. And other times I'll just sit there and go, I've got no clue. I don't know what's coming. And that's usually when it's like time, nah, I should probably back off of this thing. And see, we're not really trying to paint the ground here in detail. We're just adding color and blotches, more or less. That makes it look like there's detail, which is actually a really, really, really classic painting trick. And see, when you stand back from this painting, it's going to look 
this thing's going to look like there's all kinds of detail in it. But it's not really the detail that you think it is. All right. I think we'll work on one more thing here tonight. I'm working on putting in a little bit of red. Let me see if I can find my paintings. The photographs that I'm working from. I have found it. And now I have some idea of what I'm supposed to put in here. All right, I need some red. I need this kind of red. And I think what we'll start with is just a really light coat. And this is going to get a lot more definition once it dries. And then I can add in the highlights. Well, actually, it'll be more like the dark lights. But this is how you work in watercolor. You put in the light stuff first, and then you bring in the darks later. But see, that don't have to be done when this is dry. I'm seeing a lot of people use a hair dryer. And that's how they dry it out. I'll show you the picture of this is coming from here. Uh, I usually paint from photographs. Because I like to. Because they're my paintings. And yeah, I know. I've heard people say, oh, you should never do that, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know what? I don't care what you think. That's the way I work. Okay. Yeah, that looks all right. See, this is this is where you really make the painting right here. We're adding these these details.
Just a little bit, man. It doesn't take much. Well, we've had 50 minutes of painting tonight. Oh, I was going to show you where this is coming from. So this is the painting, more or less. And here's what I saw one day. A long time ago. This is about 10 years old at least. This is um this is at Vanagaroda. This is the narrow gauge railroad, the meter gauge railroad that's about 150 miles long that runs all through the Harts Mountains. I've ridden over most of it. There's one branch I haven't ridden on. But I've ridden over the rest of it. So yeah, that's that's the original view, that's the original idea. And you can see I still got a long way to go. I'll do some highlights here with a little bit of white gouache or Chinese white as it's called. Some of it will be um, altered slightly. <clears throat> Photographic simplification and license because that always makes it easier. But that's that's a basic painting. Hold on a second. Yeah, maybe I can bring this up a little bit. Let me see here. Let's see what I can do here. Yeah. Let's take a look. So yeah, that's that's sort of the way the paint's gonna look. It's getting a lot closer to being done. I guess you're talking about this shadow here, is my guess. That needs to get a little darker, right? It's really important, man. What you're doing here, darks have to be dark and the lights have to be light because you're spreading out or you're actually condensing the color values or the, the light and dark values. And most people, the mistake that they make when they're painting is they don't have the darks dark enough and they don't have some white in it. You need to take the full range. I used to do photography and that was a really good way to learn. This, the tape is starting to come off here. You know what, pretty soon I'll just pull that away and I'll just work on a sheet of paper here myself because I won't need the support anymore. I'll be doing little detail stuff. And for that, I, I, I don't need it to be on. It's not important. This is for when you're spreading around a lot of water. As soon as you get rid of that, it's best to get rid of the tape. Otherwise, eventually, the glue sticks onto the edge of the pages here and that's a big pain in the ass. And Yeah. So anyways, that's the plan. And let's see. I think I'll be doing some more drawing on this on Thursday night. We need to finish this off so we can get started painting it. This is down in Fusen, where that famous castle is, New Schwanstein. Schwanstein. We're working on that. We'll be working on some other stuff. But since it's 7.25, I'm probably going to bag out here for the night. We'll see you guys later. So take care, have a good evening, and don't do anything stupid. See you later. Bye.